Very good morning and welcome to Health Tuesday. On this very uh, warm morning, I almost called it cold, but then I remembered it is actually very warm out there. Welcome to the show. My name is Samuel Njoroge, and this is Good Morning Kenya, the only way to start your day. We did tell you when we were beginning this show that come this very hour we shall be having a health a talk and today is no different because we'd like to understand more on laparoscopy okay what exactly is that you know what does it entail what is it all about you who's already gone through a process such as uh, what i just mentioned earlier laparoscopy what exactly do you need uh, to to know now that you're recovering and most especially do you have any questions that you would like to raise with our doctor this morning all you need to do is to hit the hashtag good morning kenya on twitter or also find us on sms 22162 begin with the initials gmk for your sms to count and definitely we shall be taking care of them as and when we receive them However, before we start this very conversation, there is something I would like to bring to your attention. Last week, we had a conversation with Dr. Peter Okumu, and we were looking at uh, asthma and uh, asthma, pneumonia, and common cold. And courtesy of that conversation, we had a lot of questions coming from you, our viewers. You... Um, came up with some very interesting discussions, discussion points, and it is out of those discussion points that we shall be inviting Dr. Okumu back to our studio next week on Tuesday so that we are able to reply to all your messages. Very touching, very insightful, and some of them very, very specific. So we shall be doing that for you on Tuesday next week from 8 a.m. To 9 a.m. okay but for today let's look at laparoscopy I've got dr. Dennis Nyambani from uh, MP Shah Hospital how are you sir? Fine, thank you, sir doing great this morning thank you very much just tell us a little bit about yourself so <clears throat> as you introduced myself gracefully I'm dr. Dennis Nyambani I work uh, at MP Shah Hospital uh, in Parklands Westlands in the Department of uh, General Surgery and Gastroenterology. Mm -hmm. So we, we are a, an advanced care facility, a level six facility. We offer all types of diagnostic and curative services. And uh, uh, later this month, we are going to formally launch our bariatric surgery program, which is a further step in uh, laparoscopic surgery uh, which is a weight loss surgery, but still uh, a form of a minimal access to help people maintain healthy weight and lifestyles. He healthy weight and lifestyles. Yeah. Uh, let's begin from the basics then. What is laparoscopy? So, <coughs> thank you very much. So, laparoscopy is a, a relatively new concept in uh, general surgery, which has seen uh, huge strides over the past century, beginning the early uh, 21st century, where uh, some doctors uh, experimented on minimal access surgery, mm -hmm. started off in pigs, as then now it's uh, safely applied to humans. So what we do is uh, we do uh, surgeries range, ranging from uh, removal of the appendix which is a short procedure to extensive surgeries involving a resection of uh, cancers uh, just through small incisions made on the uh, anterior abdominal wall. Mm -hmm. So what we do basically is just to make small button holes through which we fit a special uh, types of uh, pots that keep these small button holes open and through that uh, we put a camera and then we uh, pump in air into the abdomen. So this inflates the abdominal wall, giving a space between the abdominal wall and the internal organs. Mm -hmm. So we can have uh, an interrupted access to all the entire uh, components of the 
gastrointestinal system usually. We also have laparoscopy for the chest and for the uh, brain also. Mm -hmm. Also, there's laparoscopy for joints. So the incisions are very small, so even the healing is very rapid. And since we do not manipulate the internal organs much, just what you need to do and what you need to see. Uh, so there's, the, there's not much profound effect on the body as uh, opposed to traditional surgery, mm -hmm. where we make big cuts to get exposure and then we have to pull apart the tissues. Uh, all that is very traumatic to the body. So That's laparoscopy true. is very minimal access, mm -hmm. very rapid diagnostic evaluation is, can be done and curative procedures can be done on any organ system. Mm -hmm. So far, we've been able to, to do that. What, yeah. what, what is it meant, essentially, to, to, to address? So laparoscopy, uh, it cuts down on how much trauma, because even surgery itself is a trauma to the body even though it is trauma under anesthesia, mm -hmm. but the patient is not able to, to feel the pain. However, uh, comparing laparoscopic surgery to the traditional just open surgery, we've seen huge advantages of uh, laparoscopic surgery in terms of how fast you can heal, very rapid. Like for instance, if we remove your appendix, you can go home the following day. Mm -hmm as opposed to traditionally used to make a big 10 centimeter cut over here. You have to be in bed for two, three days in hospital first, and then the associated pain. Now that pain in laparoscopy is very minimal. Return to activity is very quick. You don't need a long time of recuperation. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the scarring, scarring is minimal. The incisions are uh, around 5 to 10 millimeters. So those incisions tend to heal quickly and they do not produce much scarring. So the advantages are protein and uh, can't. Uh L listening to you this morning, Dr. Tari, you know, there is. Would it then be a misconception that laparoscopy is a form of a cosmetic surgery? Well, uh, I will not call it that, though the benefits, as, uh, the benefits in terms of cosmesis mm -hmm. are good. However, cosmetic surgery usually addresses uh, changing uh, usually the appearance of a person or a particular part of the body, like the nose or the chins, just configuring it to how you like. So cosmetic, or more correctly, plastic surgery is not exactly the same as laparoscopic surgery. Because uh -huh. the aims of doing the laparoscopic surgery are first and foremost to achieve a diagnosis and to again intervene when the disease process, uh, surgically speaking. Uh -huh. So laparoscopy is more curative compared to cosmetic surgery which is more aesthetic. However, the results of laparoscopy look better than traditional approach. So if somebody like is a swimmer or a profession involves, you know, much showing a lot of skin, mm. like modeling, you know, a, a, a lot of other things, then laparoscopy will be the better option to consider if you require any kind of surgery. Hmm. Yeah. So what we're saying this morning is that it's still a form of surgery, however, it's less invasive. Yeah. Um, the trauma also, it's less traumatic, rather, and the recovery time mm. is faster than in normal or traditional surgery, what we're used to. Yeah. Uh, someone then may wonder, is it something that is expensive? It is an expensive exercise to undertake? Definitely so. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> You see, the expense in laparoscopy, <coughs> uh, first we use highly specialized equipment, you know, uh, just from the laparoscopic towel. It is a, it is a video, live video system. Mm -hmm. 
that has the capability, first of all, to record the entire surgery. Then secondly, to maintain the, the pressures inside required to keep the, the organ separate from the skin. Mm -hmm. So there is that you know, tradition when you sit, when you're lying down, the abdominal wall and the intestines, I'm particularly focusing on the GI because that is my area of specialization. Mm -hmm. They, they're in contact like this. So when you push in air between these two, it lifts the wall up. Then you can get access without necessarily touching this. Uninterrupted so, access. Yeah, so there's that continuous insufflation, just pushing in air uh, around the clock, maintaining a safe pressure. Because again, you see, this is the body. You have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. The infrastructure involved in laparoscopy is quite expensive. A, a tire system can range anywhere between 2 million and 15 million. So even the investment in laparoscopy is quite a lot. And then the kind of uh, surgical instruments that we require to operate, because you are not using your hands as per se, you're using the instruments and uh, you're making a special image using what you're seeing on the screen and what you can feel. So those instruments, are special instruments, they are terribly expensive. And uh, again, we need to like divide the tissues. We are using electric current mm -hmm. so that we don't have any bleeding. Mm -hmm. Again, also to cut, we just cut with the current. It's uh, terribly expensive devices that we use. We're looking so at 2 to 15 million. So that's just the basic investment in the towel. Uh -huh. Then these instruments, you know, the wear and tear is a regular process. So the instruments need to be placed. Some instruments are single use. Some of the devices that we use to do the resection, or joining one part to the other, mm. those are they they are very also expensive and they are single they are single use. So the margins compared to a traditional approach, the margins are huge. They can range between two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand. Just basic, just considering this surgery only for the same procedure, open procedure. The difference can be can be extreme. And when you talk so of the equipment being of a single use nature, does it mean it's use and discard? Yeah, we have uh, two types of uh, uh, devices. Mm -hmm. We have single use devices, and we have reusable devices. So, for the single use devices, are those that you don't expect to be able to use after you use on one patient. You know, like some types of uh, anastom uh, joining devices, sometimes of cutting devices. This can only use once, then subsequently they will not be optimally working condition or there will be, there's no way to sterilize them. Mm -hmm. So they, we have single use devices and we have reusable devices. So. How sometimes you find if a patient cannot really, you know, afford all the entire cost, then they prefer to have the reuse reusable devices. Mm -hmm. But when we do not have an option, then again, you see the cost, the cost implications come into play. Come into play. Yeah. What are the risks involved when it comes to laparoscopy? So. Let me say that laparoscopy is generally considered and from numerous studies that have been done mm -hmm. over the past 100 years, it is safer and has been shown to be better than the open traditional surgery. Mm -hmm. So the risks of laparoscopic surgery are less. However, um, as with any other kind of surgeries, the risk of bleeding, because even then, you still have to make cuts. You still have to move tissues here and there, remove some, repair some. 
So bleeding is universal for all kinds of surgeries. However, it is minimal, very minimal. The risks, other risks uh, which are unique to laparoscopy are because of the pressures involved in maintaining uh, this open, uh, maintaining this cavity in a workable condition. Laparoscopy is not ideal for people who have uh, some form of uh, heart dysfunction. Mm -hmm. If your heart is not working properly, then it will not be very wise to offer you laparoscopy because the extra strain of maintaining, pushing blood through this high pressure zone we've created will, can be demanding on the heart. And so, also the current. Yeah, involved. and the current, if you have um, a pacemaker, yeah. then there are certain types of uh, energy devices that we cannot use, okay? Mm -hmm. So, the, it is uh, generally, it is a, uh, how is my patient like? That's what is important for me. Mm -hmm. Before I offer you laparoscopy, it, so it's generally safe, but for healthy patients with no underlying heart problems. So patient's and, history and, is and critical. Lung, lung problems, mm -hmm. patient Be Because one of also the things that were going through my mind as you were answering that question is pre-existing conditions, mm -hmm. because people have them. Are there pre-existing health conditions? You already mentioned heart mm -hmm. issues, but mm -hmm. then are there others? I'm looking at diabetes, I'm looking at cancer. Are there others that have got to be considered before anyone is recommended for a laparoscopy? There are some. Yeah. Laparoscopy is recommended for all, for most patients. And uh, because the benefits mostly outweigh the risks. However, for a small subset of patients, we have been shown to not to tolerate it very well. Mm. So if you have underlying cardiac disease, like your heart is failing, it can't really pump m blood uh, as much as it should, then straining it uh, through uh, pumping blood, again, you're, when you're putting this pressure, blood flow is also impaired, return from the lower part of the body. So if you're reducing that further, the heart cannot pump well. It becomes a challenge managing such a kind of surgery in this patient. The other patients with a chronic obstructive, uh, you know, pulmonary disease. These guys, we call them trappers. Mm -hmm. They retain uh, carbon dioxide in their lungs, and their lungs are inflated size of a balloon. Mm -hmm. So, and we usually inflate with a carbon dioxide because it is inflammable. It is, no, it is an inert gas. Mm -hmm. So when you're using current, it can't cause a fire. Yes. But this carbon dioxide gets absorbed into the bloodstream and it is excreted in the lungs. So we also want to be careful with uh, patients like this who have uh, lung problems also. Then the very elderly, again, they're not ideal candidates for this kind of thing. So the extremes of age, elderly, elderly patients, mm -hmm and uh, young children. Young children. However, generally most of the population, laparoscopy is usually the better option, uh, the safer option. Mm -hmm. And I could say it's usually the best option for most. For, for most. most. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you can get that kind of money, two million, two to 15 million. Well, you can say that, but. Two to 15 million. For the, the costs, uh, there has not been a good penetrance of insurance to the populace. Exactly. And uh, NHIF does not usually cover the 100% costs of uh, laparoscopy or any surgery to, for that matter in the private sector. Mm -hmm. In the public sector, it is available in some units. However, the queues are crazy 
and the personnel is limited. So that's why there's higher penetrance of laparoscopy in the private sector, but not everyone is insured. So if you're looking to have a laparoscopic surgery, then you need to like uh, find a way of raising the finances. The finances. If, if you're not insured. Because uh, yeah. do insurance companies uh, cover this in full? They do cover it in full. Yes. And I think that's because they find it is better for their patients. The initial cost is and higher. more lucrative for their business. I, I don't think, <laughs> I, I will not say that, you know. It's fine. Because the way we like to say that you should not have conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. Insurance companies should not be invested in the business on the, on the uh, patient, on the doctor side. Mm -hmm. the, if you're paying for your patient, then again you should not have any... Uh, conflict with the other side. Yeah, the but, doctor should uh, have nothing to do with it. It, uh, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's unregulated society. We're still coming up. This very young, young sector, exactly. very young country. We don't have uh, proper laws mm -hmm. to regulate. So there's a lot of conflict of interest most of the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, <coughs> they do usually, they usually complain sometimes when uh, you use some of these d devices, but we've come up with ways to, like, you know, mitigate the cost. Mm. So most of the time, the full cost is not borne by the patient. And even we are doing a pilot at the end of this month where we'll be looking to operate on uh, s some few ca select cases without having them having to bear the costs of the, the laparoscopy. They'll just bear the cost of being treated, being you know, treated. the medicines and uh, the staying in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, we'll be doing this on uh, between the 27th and the 29th of July. We'll have a live laparoscopic uh, workshop so that we can uh, get exposure to the masses that Hey guys, we have this. This is better. It is safer. This is recommended for you guys. So just know that it is there. And I don't know how many guys have the knowledge of lap laparoscopy. So our aim first is to create that kind of awareness. You can have most uh, types of surgeries yeah. without uh, exerting undue strain on your body. You will heal fast, you will have uh, minimal scarring mm. and minimal pain. Mm. And in that same workshop, we hope to introduce guys to the concept of laparoscopic bariatric surgery. This is a weight loss surgery uh, where we either reduce the size of your stomach or we do some bypass procedures, mm. all aimed at you will get fuller faster and you eat less. You see, that's the only way to reduce weight is either to reduce your energy intake or to exercise. Or to increase your, 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 your... Yeah, it's a balance. You have to do one or the other. So we hope to uh, get a few guys to, to do that. And uh, we have the personnel. Uh, we are still registering patients at affordable rates. So. Let's get this out there, that laparoscopy is, a, it's is the, way, it's the way to go, actually. It's an option it's and, the the way way to go. And, and the way to go. You're getting Dr. Dennis Nyambani's uh, message this morning. It's the way to go. However, before we bring this to an end, Dr. Tari, how, with each and every surgery, there's a way you prepare for it. Yeah. How do you prepare for laparoscopy? Uh, or a laparoscopic surgery? That's a very good question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, for any kind of surgery, we have to do baseline investigations. Mm -hmm. We have to test your blood. We have to check whether your lungs and your heart are functioning optimally. For young patients, this usually uh, with good reserve, 
we just do baseline investigations, you know, how much blood is in your body, how strong are you for to withstand any kind of surgery. So there, there is not much difference when we are preparing you for an open procedure and a laparoscopic procedure. We only just take into extra consideration your heart and lung function. Those bare minimum should be should be just working fine. Yeah. Then because then the surgery becomes riskier for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So other than that then if you've had uh, previous surgeries what happens is that um, the intestines they tend to stick together st uh, or stick to your an anterior abdominal wall and because we have to get through the anterior abdominal wall to see then it becomes a bit of a challenge if you've had like one or two one or two surgeries we are likely to encounter difficulties. Difficult. So uh, getting a good history from the patient is most important mm -hmm. so that we know what to expect, what to anticipate, mm -hmm. and uh, then we can do that. The other thing then, sometimes it's not ideal if you have a very advanced disease like a cancer that has spread already to do laparoscopic surgery. Some, some studies are coming out saying that because of the pressures involved, you can have some seeding of some of the tumor cells into where you put your pots. The pots are where we, we go in and see. So sometimes it's dicey if you have advanced disease mm -hmm. that we would consider laparoscopy. So generally, if you're fit, fit a uh, young man like yourself without any underlying uh, comorbidities, that uh, if your baseline investigations are okay, then we usually proceed. Proceed. Yeah. Yeah. A lot to learn, a lot to learn. Uh, we're pressed for time, so we will not be in a position to look at the gray areas because this being a a field in science it definitely has some areas that are still being investigated hopefully uh, uh, as time goes by we will get an opportunity to have dr dennis nyambani back to talk more on the gray areas that are still being investigated as far as laparoscopy is concerned but for now your take home is that this is relatively new in the kenyan market let me say, let me use the word relatively new. It's out there, it's being insured by health insurance companies, and it is something you can consider, especially if you are not into the whole traditional surgical procedures that come with trauma, that come with a lot of uh, uh, invasiveness and stuff like that. If that is something you would like to offer, to, to avoid, then definitely laparoscopic surgery is something you may need to consider if you're out there and you're struggling with weight and you would, uh, you're would you considering maybe uh, gastric uh, bypass surgery, maybe you can try a la laparoscopic uh, way of going about it. And as Dr. Ari says, in a day two, you're back to your normal activity, doing just well, but you need to prepare one, on patient's history, that is very critical. You cannot leave any piece of information out and most especially prepare for the finances, okay? It doesn't come easy, therefore it doesn't come cheap, all right? My name is Samuel Njoroge, but before I bring this to a close, Dr. Tari, thank you so much for coming this morning and for sharing that much needed insight on laparoscopic surgery. Where and how to find it, just uh, Google it up and you'll find a lot of information on it. My name is Samuel Njeroge. Thank you so much for watching Health Tuesday. Thank you so much for keeping us company right here on Good Morning Kenya from 6 a.m. all the way till now. On behalf of the entire production crew that has made this production a reality as well as my production, or rather my colleagues, Safina Chiang and Brenda Zeda Radido, we do wish you a blessed